Hey, quick question. What do these jobs have in common? Accountant, carpenter, beautician, electrician, photographer, graphic artist, interior designer, choreographer, writer, chef, seamstress. They all work in the Oklahoma film industry. And there's a place for you to join the action. Learn more about starting your film career in Oklahoma by visiting okfilmmusic.org forward slash getting started. Hello, everyone. My name is Yusuf Kazemi, and I'm the Outreach and Production Manager for the Oklahoma Film and Music Office. We are thrilled to be a sponsor of this year's Dead Center Film Festival and present to you our Zoom series on Oklahoma film education. Oklahoma has a variety of universities, colleges, tech schools, high schools, and many other organizations offering film education programs and ways to jumpstart your career in Oklahoma's film workforce. We'll be getting to speak with a few representatives from various organizations today, and we're so thankful for their participation, so thank you. And if you like this type of content, we'd love for you to visit our website, okfilmmusic.org. On the Getting Started page of our website, we have much more educational content, including a complete list of all universities and schools, a podcast, our Pivotal Work YouTube uh, early access series, much, much more. Lots of great free content, film education resources for you there. So check that out. Stay connected with us on social media. And again, many thanks to those who participated in today's series. Thank you to Dead Center Film Festival for allowing this platform. And thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoy this session. Hello, how are you? I'm well, how are you? Wonderful, thank you. Can you please tell us your name and what school or organization you're representing today? Absolutely. My name is Trevor Rogers, and I am the executive director of the Film Education Institute of Oklahoma. Awesome. Thank you for joining us today. We're excited to talk all things FEIO. Yeah, it is our pleasure. Uh, there's so many exciting things going on for our state right now, and so it, we're thrilled to be here. And FEIO is one of them. Can you talk about how uh, you got started and what you're currently offering students? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the FEIO is a nonprofit organization um, that is the culmination and amalgamation of years of putting together uh, various institutions across the state to train students um, to be a part of our film industry. We got started um, in 2017, actually under uh, the umbrella of Nathan Gardaki Productions, one of our local vendors here in the state. Um, and it, it's our mission and goal to help connect as many students from as many places uh, to our, our budding industry. That's wonderful. And so um, FEIO itself, what does it offer in terms of, is it classes? Is it a workshop? What is the setup or you know future setup coming down the pipeline of how students engage? Yeah, absolutely. So our program is essentially two things. Um, one, it is uh, what, essentially what serves as a capstone, and that is our, our workshops that we've done in the past. And our workshops are an actual film set where we are taking students from various industries, various institutions across the state, and taking the skills that they've learned in the classroom and applying it to a real world scenario under the guidance of our state's best and brightest filmmakers, department heads, these serve as our crew base instructors. And so when students go through our program, um, when they participate in this workshop, they're, they're going to be doing the things that are done every day on a film set. So uh, they're, they're setting the lights, they're running the cameras, they're the assistant director team that is, that is handling all of the logistics on the shoot. Basically all of those credits you see at the end of the movie, this is where students get their first credit and they're not doing so as anybody's assistant, they are doing so as if this is their first professional gig on a film set. 
And then the other side of our, uh, of our nonprofit is curriculum development and partnering with numerous institutions across the state, including colleges, universities, tech centers, and even some high schools where students have the ability to um, take some of our programs in the, the school of their choice, and it prepares them for the industry, prepares them for the workshop where they can come strut their stuff, demonstrate their skills, um, and, and move on into the industry into the desired uh, trade that they're interested in. That's great. And so how do students, you know, apply for the program or the workshop? What's that like, that process? Yeah, so um, we are currently taking applications for our workshop that is coming up uh, July 5th through the 8th here in Oklahoma City um, at Prairie Surf Studios. Um, students can log on to feiok.org um, and they can enroll there. Enrollment um, for students that are enrolled um, in either college, university, or tech center um, can enroll for $250, uh, or they can, um, if they are not from a, a, an institution, if they're, they're coming from another trade, another field, um, they can also enroll um, at $350. And so students' uh, enrollments going on there, they can apply um, today, and that'll be running through June 14th. We'll be cutting off um, the deadline then. Um, and then for our future programs, um, starting this July, we will be rolling out enrollment for the fall semester um, for our various uh, partner schools across the state, including, uh, but not limited to, schools like Tulsa Tech, OCCC, uh, Francis Tuttle, Canadian Valley. Um, students will begin to be able to also go to feiok.org, look at the various programs um, that we're offering um, that includes, you know, set basics. So how to how to be a good production assistant. Those essential skills every student's going to need. Um, it, up to you know very specific trades like grip, electric, um, set construction, scenic painting, sound. Um, all of the, the various jobs that you'd find on a film set. Um, students can begin enrolling later this summer for fall courses, and those are going to be short term courses. Okay, and those will be a collaboration between FEIO and with some of the schools you mentioned, correct? Yes, yes, those are our partnership campuses. It's our, our goal and mission to involve as many host institutions as possible. Um, you know, we have, are so lucky to have over 40 industry professionals that work um, both here in Oklahoma City and as well on some of the largest movies around the world that truly craft our programs. We take the knowledge of what is current in the industry and we're formalizing it and putting it into the classroom for these schools to host. That way they can start kicking out um, even more students um, to you know, fulfill this, this massive demand that we've got uh, coming up here in the next few years. That's wonderful. And what successes have you seen or that you might like to highlight thus far through the work you've done uh, through these workshops in terms of alumni and people that have participated with you all. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we're, we're so proud of, the, of our, our so many students that have come through a workshop that are working in the industry today. Um, in just uh, 2019 alone, um, it's, I know there's that weird gap year with, with everything. Um, uh, we were excited to welcome um, 14 of our new 15 members of uh, IOTSE, which is a film union that, that, uh, that works in a lot of covered departments. Um, 14 of our new 15 members came directly from our workshop programs. Um, and so um, we, we're seeing students that just in a, in a very short time um, have moved up to be department heads um, like uh, Moses Jenkins, Tristan Chisholm, um, and just to name a, a couple that have come back, uh, got their, pro their start in our program um, years ago, and now are able to come and pay it forward, come back to our workshop with years of experience, being a union member, and actually instruct at some of these workshops. That's awesome. Well. So, the student yeah, has become the teacher now. I know, it's crazy, and, and in such a short time, and, and these these students are working on, on the biggest movies that are coming through Oklahoma with just recently um, American Underdog um, and, and Reagan, um, 
uh, you know, just, just to name a couple reservations dogs up in, up in Tulsa, and even some students that are actively working that, that just completed a workshop in December that are working in the electric department on Killers of the Flower Moon. That's and amazing. So, yeah, yeah. So working on some of the biggest and brightest productions here in the state. Um, and it's just all because of the connections they, they made um, at our workshops. That's great. Well, why should someone consider pursuing further education with FEI? So um, it is it is about just wanting to get your foot in the door in the industry and, and picking a campus that is just close to you. Um, you know, the, the benefit of the FEIO is we are an organization that is comprised of active filmmakers. And so we, we utilize our connections to the industry to connect our students and prospective filmmakers to their future employers. And so when they, when they enroll in a program, let's say um, at, at Tulsa Tech, you know, they're, they're going to get their education from that tech center, get their certificate from that tech center. But because it's a program that we crafted for them, it immediately feeds into um, kind of our track, our alignment with our, our department head partners, with our, our resources that are the filmmakers that, that make movies here every day. And that's what it all, it, it's all about. It is, you know, you learn everything in a classroom, getting your foot in the door in the film industry is so hard. You have to know somebody. Um, we are that, that final networking connection um, for students to be able to truly break in and, and start working in the industry. Well, that's wonderful. Is there anything else in closing that you'd like to highlight about FEIO for audiences to know? Yeah, the, just be on the lookout for um, our, our enrollment um, starting uh, this summer at our partner institutions. You know, we're going to have schools all across the state, so you don't have to travel too far um, to if you're if you're curious about the industry, um, you know, you can you can get this training in your backyard. Um, and uh, where we're so excited about the programs that we're rolling out for the remainder of 2021. Um, and uh, 2022 looks to be very bright as well um, as we continue to find what these productions are going to be needing and how we can best prepare um, our future crew base for those productions. That's awesome. Well, we so appreciate everything FEIO is doing. Can you remind people one more time the website where they can go to find more information? Yes, if you're interested in any of our programs, our workshops, please log in to feiok.org. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Trevor, for joining us. We appreciate it. It's and a pleasure as always. Connecting later down the road again. Absolutely. Pleasure as always. Thanks for having us. Yes, take care. <laughs> bye bye. Hello, how are you all doing today? Great, thanks. Terrific, wonderful. Would you all please introduce yourselves for everyone and tell us what school or organization you're with? Uh, I'm Gray Fredrickson. And I'm with Oklahoma City Community College. And uh, this is Greg Ballot, who is uh, in charge of our cinema program. And Sean Lynch, who is, runs the cinema program. He's our boss. <laughs> love, love it. We got the dream team from OCCC in the house today. That's wonderful. And well, if I could just add one thing, Joseph, and I ask that, yeah, because they're so modest, but Gray is, I think, probably the only uh, film faculty member in this state that's a member of the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, Oscar winner, Emmy winner. Sean has not only was one of our first students that's gone on to have a career out with wonderful work in art direction, production design, uh, production designer for Dinesh D'Souza's uh, uh, America movie. He's, he's created courses that were actually became films where students got IMDb credit for uh, Just Crazy Enough. And uh, he's also president of the FEIO now, the Film Education Institute. Congrats, so, that's awesome. So really working to get uh, that connection so we can get our students, our graduates placed out there in uh, the wonderful film world that's growing here in, in Oklahoma so wonderfully. It's Absolutely. amazing how it, how it is growing. Uh, when I first came, I came back to Oklahoma in 2000 and uh, semi-retired looking for something to do and uh, I went around, I, I, I got involved with Senator Lefwich 
uh, who's since gone, passed away, but we went around and lobbied at the Capitol to get the Compete with Canada Act passed, which was a, a cash rebate for dollars spent here in the state. Uh, and we ended up getting, I was like a lobbyist. I went to all the offices of all the different legislators and we got it passed 15%. On every dollar that you would spend here, you'd get back 15 cents. That was what launched the program. And then the president of the Oklahoma City Community College reached out to me and said, we, we, we teach uh, workforce development. That's what you are promoting. Why don't we start a program here? So I started the program in 2000 with uh, uh, friends of mine who came in with a truck was, and donated some electric and grip equipment. And I bought a, uh, uh, a V, v uh, what's it called? Uh, the, the video camera I bought. Oh, the Panasonic. JVC. Or JVC. Yeah. JVC video camera. Everybody said, oh, you got to have film. I said, no, it's all going to be digital someday, it won't be filmed. And uh, we started out with about 10 students, I think was the first year. And it's been growing ever since. We've got very lucky with grants from wonderful foundations and people here in the state. And we had, uh, now have a full blown, as you can see behind us, a full blown movie studio, 6,000 square feet. We have all the latest equipment. Sean was just telling me yesterday, that we are getting the new Airy uh, camera, which is uh, the ultimate. We have, we have, how many reds do we have? Three reds? Three reds, one we epic. Three, one epic two. Three, two, F, two reds and an epic. And uh, all the latest uh, uh, digital uh, technology and uh, the LED lighting panels, all the toys that you could ever want if you want to learn anything about making movies. And you can learn from the beginning by learning screenwriting from Greg, who came from uh, UCLA and USC, has a master's from USC, and has been teaching now for 20 years. So we got we got some good uh, some good bones here. That's incredible. You guys have an amazing soundstage, as you said, a, an awesome playground for students to learn and and hone their skills. So how long does it take to complete the program at OCCC? That really varies by the degree they choose. We actually have three options here at Oklahoma City Community College. We have what is called a certificate of mastery, uh, which means you're not going to come away with an associate's degree you're, and you're only going to take film classes. So if you're interested in just going into the workforce, learning about film and going and doing that, the certificate of mastery might be right for you. And generally that takes about a year and a half. Um, and then we do also have an associate's of applied science. Uh, degree, which is an associate's degree. Uh, it is going to be heavier in film and lighter in general ed courses. Um, and it's kind of what we call a standalone associate's degree. It's designed if, again, after you get that associate's, you want to go directly into the work field uh, and go into the workforce. Uh, that's generally right. And generally, that takes about two years. And then we have an AA degree, which is uh, considered a transferable degree. That's going to be he lighter in general ed, uh, sorry, heavier in general ed, lighter in film. Uh, and that also generally takes about two years. But we get students that vary. We don't force you through the program faster than you can. A lot of our students are working adults uh, that have jobs and kids and families and stuff like that. So we get some students to take three or four years to finish the program um, and they just want to learn how to do it right. So we take the time and we're not going to you know, kick them out of the program because they take longer than two years. to. Complete. And the AA degree transfers on to a four-year mm -hmm. school and yeah. we have deals with OCU and yes. uh, OU. Mm -hmm. So uh, they're, if they want their bachelor four-year degree, mm -hmm. their two years here is accepted at those those institutions. That's and great. I was going to ask using, if it was able to help. transfer. Mm -hmm. Yes, and great. also if you say if you have a, an existing VA in another subject, you can take a, a the certificate program, and then we'll bring in all those Gen Eds, so you can get a certificate and a degree from here and so on. And obviously, so, we have lots of our students yes. that come in, take a couple classes, and go to the workforce. So it's it's That's not right. saying that necessarily you necessarily have to graduate. Mm -hmm. We like people to graduate. Obviously, we're an educational institution, but our job is workforce development, and getting right. students working in the film industry. That is our core uh, value of what we do here. The higher ed people here don't like it because they they look at graduation rate, right? And we don't graduate enough students because they're all leaving and going off and getting jobs. And that's education doesn't like that. They, they want to finish them up and get their degree before they go off and get jobs. 
but you guys are turning out uh, so many students really helping grow Oklahoma's local film workforce here. Um, through your program, are there any notable alumni you might like to highlight that are working here locally or have gone on to work nationally too? Oh, yeah. Yeah, look, for, for starters, we've got Yosuke Shingu, who took his capstone project here, got a co-financer, now is co-owner of Gen M Creative his own marketing company here. That's amazing. He started yeah. his own business. He started yeah. his own business from a project down here. Cause that's the thing we, we, we want to help you make your portfolio for your work. So you can go out and open doors of opportunity for yourself. And we have Carlos Manzano. He's now a program director at OETA because we have an internship program. He started as an intern there and then they loved him. And uh, now he's a, a director there. That's um, great. And correct me if I'm wrong is isn't Sean someone that has come through the program and now the teacher has become yes. a student? Absolutely. He's, a huge, he's a huge success story. About 25, 26 25, films. 26 movies. <laughs> That's incredible. The uh, student has become the teacher. Yeah, he's got a good teacher. And then we also have Stacy Mize, who's actually off in New York working, working on Saturday Night mm -hmm. Live. Uh, we have Nick and Lamar uh, that actually do music videos over in England. Mm -hmm. uh, they get flown over there all the time. Uh, Jeff Marks, uh, the top AC in the state, is one of our former students. Um, Jeff Dubray. Jeff Dubray, who just uh, won the AD team for uh, Minari, uh, was one of our Straight students up. when he first AD'd that. Um, we put out a variety of different types of students. And we're very students. proud of Trevor Rogers, Trevor, yeah. who's now in charge of FEIO, yeah. and he's a graduate of ours. And we've got several graduates working mm -hmm. for Nathan at Nathan Gardaki Productions. Mm -hmm. and, and Duke and Sam Duke Taylor. And Sam most, Taylor. most of the camera crew in the state is our former students. Look at a crew list and they're bound to have some, some points back to Oprah. Oh, most oh of for sure. Most, most of them. Of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's great. Well, as we're wrapping up our time together, is there anything else you'd like to highlight about what OCCC offers uh, students who may be interested in film? Every professor here is a working professional. We're still making movies, just like at SC, which is where I, I got my master's. We had the, the teachers, they worked during the day, they came to teach us at night. It's a great thing to be taught by professionals because it keeps you humble. You know, you may think you know this and that, and your next show is going to show you how much you have Don't yet to learn. Yeah. But that's the same thing that Francis taught us when he was here. It's like, how many places in this state or this country can say, okay, well, we were the birthplace of the first transmission of live cinema. That's because of Gray, his relationship with Francis is because Francis, when he came here, saw that this was a small studio, so it would be perfect. Also, if we're talking about Francis Ford Coppola. Ford Coppola. Clarify, yeah. Francis Ford Coppola. Yeah. Did you know he came here and we did it? Yes, yes, I'm very familiar with it. And Sean was his gaffer. And Sean also ran the light board for this. And so we rehearsed for three weeks with 70 some students between film and drama. And then we, we, we streamed it to live cinema. Never been done before. And to Paris. But that's because of Gray and his his connections and friendships. And then it's because. Are you guys there? Students to get experience. Mm -hmm. And the other thing for cost is this. It's like, yeah, there are places where you can pay thousands of dollars for some three-day weekends. But here it's like, well, our, our, our courses, by the time you get the equipment fees, are around $400. And for that, you're going to get to use equipment for 16 weeks and you would pay that for one day of equipment rental on most places here in town. So it gives you a wonderful, students a wonderful That's opportunity. That's a great, to, best deal in town. Yeah, and financially, <laughs> yeah. it is absolutely. Best deal in the country, actually. Yeah, yeah. so. And, right. and, and like I said, it's a very hands-on program. Like I said, we're gonna get you in here, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about it, we're gonna get you to learn it, and then you're gonna do it, and you're gonna do it over and over and over again so that you're ready to go be crew members. And that's our biggest thing. It's like I said, I like I said, we are a community college, but workforce development is our core thing of what we do is we wanna put students to work. And the reason that we have the equipment that we do is not just the college gave us a ton load of money. As Gray's saying, it's like we got grant money, but we got grant money before the films that we made for the community. So we've built our program on filmmaking. And it's been a program that's been built with our students and with Sean Gray coming out to help make the projects that make the foundations happy that, that get us the next grant. So we built our program into what it's become. We started with one work on camera when I got here. One, <laughs> one that old JV. Look, look, look at you right. now. That's still incredible. Have, yeah. incredible. We got about 30 cameras now, yeah, right? Yeah. The that's best wonderful. Yeah. 
Bye. Well, we appreciate you all joining us so much. Thank you for highlighting Oklahoma City Community College film program. Where can people go online to find out more information about you all? They can go to Oklahoma City Community College website and about OCCC. And then under that tab is the digital cinema uh, production tab. Uh, but my suggestion is what they should do if they're really interested is call the college, ask to get a hold of one of us. Uh, they will get you our number and leave a message if we're not here or you know, send us an email. And uh, my suggestion would come take a tour. Come visit. Uh, we'll, yeah. we'll take yeah. the time to take you around, talk to you about all your questions, any kind of, I, I, you know, because again, it's, it's and bring your parents if you're, yes. if you're young, because right. it's scary to say that you're out there, you know, you're, right. you're, you're, yeah. your student's going to be a filmmaker, right? It's scary. So we got to come talk to the parents yes. as well. So, right. And yeah, that way we can here. show them, we can show them what uh, Francis gave us some money at such a happy time here. And we combine that with grant money. So we've got a, a screening room now that's Just got 4K large. production huge screen set one of the few places in this state that's got 7.1 surround sound and a board to mix it on yeah. so don't accept anything we just said <laughs> just come here come and it. just yeah. experience this and then you decide you know if this that's incredible you got it all come yeah. see for yourself for yeah, sure exactly. yes. yeah. yeah but we owe it all to this to this man here because we'd have nothing if he hadn't said okay i'm not yeah, I didn't, I didn't no but you started yeah it's like in the presence of greatness and a dead center icon too i meant to point out that was the first that was the first dead center icon yes 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 yeah. rightfully oh, so sure. well thank you guys so much for joining us we appreciate it thanks for all you do thank you, Our thank pleasure. you for all you do Our pleasure. So thank, thank you thank you yeah. Hi, how are you? Can you please introduce yourself and tell us what school or organization you're with? Yeah, hi, we're from Oklahoma City University. I'm Billy Palumbo, visiting associate professor. And I'm Brian Cardinelli Powell. I'm associate professor and chair of the film department. Awesome, thank you guys so much for joining us today. We're excited to learn a little bit more about your school's program. Can you all please tell us about the history of Oklahoma City University's film program and what it offers to students? Okay, um, so the, the film program at Oklahoma City University started back around 2007. Um, so since about then, we've been offering film production classes. Uh, we offer the only BFA in Oklahoma um, right now. So it's a four year degree that offers students um, what we like to say is an experience to learn to think like a filmmaker. Um, we, we concentrate on sort of helping students move from uh, the perspective of using a camera and just sort of following people around to really understanding how you use all the tools of cinema in different ways to construct and create different kinds of projects. Um, you know, it, it's, it's useful also maybe to think about how we approach our curriculum. We have three different types of classes to give students a really comprehensive look at filmmaking. There are film culture classes that help them understand the traditions and aesthetics of film uh, filmmaking. There are film craft classes like screenwriting, cinematography, sound design, editing, the kinds of core technical kinds of areas. And then the workshops we're really proud of because the workshops are where uh, students in each different academic year have an opportunity to really work on their own projects, either individually or more often in different kinds of group settings. Wonderful. And I believe you've kind of already addressed this, but to be more specific, how long does it take to complete the program? Yeah, at OCU, it's a four-year degree, a, a BFA. Um, although if you've done two years at OCCC, uh, we have a formal agreement that you'd be able to complete uh, your, your BFA in two years additionally at OCU, or we've worked with students who've come out of other community colleges in the area and all around Oklahoma to make it uh, as, as short as possible. That's awesome. So some of those transfer students' previous coursework will apply to the degree at your university, correct? Yeah, absolutely. They're, the classes that you can get at some of the community colleges uh, are sort of one-for-one -one equivalents to some of the uh, freshman, sophomore level classes that we have. That's great. Well, are there any notable alumni now working in the industry, either here locally or nationally, that you'd like to highlight that have come through your program? There are a few uh, particularly prominent local filmmakers that, uh, that studied at OCU. Uh, Lance McDaniel comes to mind. Uh, Jacob Burns comes to mind. Uh, Nathan Gardaki of Nathan Gardaki Productions, both he and his brother Jonathan, who work up there, um, uh, came through our program. Um, there, uh, Sarah McKenzie is a graduate of our program who moved to Chicago and worked for several years uh, as a production coordinator for Shameless 
and has since moved out to Los Angeles to work in television out there. Um, and we have other people that have, have gone on to do a variety of different things in, uh, here in Oklahoma, but also in New York and Los Angeles, going to graduate school, things like that. That's incredible. I, we were familiar with many of those names on the list. Some of them are former Dead Center icons and festival directors and all of that. So that's wonderful. Um, why should someone consider pursuing further education at your institution? Well, the biggest thing that sets uh, our film department and program apart from the others is that the students leave their senior year having made their own capstone film. Um, it's a year long process that the students write their own project. They work in pre-production, they cast it, they hire their crew, they direct the project and then they oversee the editing. Often they edit it themselves. Um, and I think it's a really unique experience because it, it is the culmination of the entire four years of uh, all of those craft classes and workshop and culture classes, um, but put toward the individual students own uh, artistic way of seeing the world and expressing themselves. And at OCU, there's, uh, there's the support to make that happen. We have all the, the technical support and equipment, but there's also mentorship from the faculty that students get um, tons of and the students really respond to. But also there's the acting students if you wanna cast students in the theater department here. Um, the film score is coming from the music department here. There's so many creatives on campus at OCU uh, that you can, that students can use those to support the, the project that they're doing. Absolutely, because OCU is a very robust arts program. They're not only churning out the film talents, but the actors as well with uh, music theater and the dance, yeah. absolutely. And you mentioned uh, the Capstone Project. I've personally had the pleasure of seeing a lot of those included in different film festivals around Oklahoma and elsewhere too. And you all annually have a student film festival as well. Am I correct? I feel like I've I've seen uh, like a student showcase at uh, some of the local venues here before. Well, there, you may be thinking about a couple of different things. Um, okay. We do have a uh, we do have at the end of the capstone year, um, the last couple of years, we've been able to partner with the Rodeo Cinema um, and to do a public screening of the capstone films that the seniors have made, which is an amazing, uh, an amazing experience for everybody involved to be able to see the movie um, projected at that size and to be able to enjoy it with as many people as we're able to put to, in the theater is, is really great. Um, we also do host um, a high school film festival. So for, for people who are considering or thinking about what they might be doing for college, um, the high school film festival is a good way to you know, present some of the work that you've made, um, maybe earn a scholarship for, for study here at the university. Um, we also have a cash prize that we use oftentimes with that, but you might've been thinking about either one of those kinds of things. That's great. And, and the high school program, is that open to uh, statewide high schoolers or is it beyond that? Can you tell a little bit about that in case there's any young audience members watching that might be curious on how to submit their works for that? I'll let you do that one, Billy. Sure, <laughs> it is, uh, uh, I think international. I think we've, we've actually had films made by high schoolers and high school age students um, in Europe and Asia in the past. Um, and all the details, if okcu.edu slash film, um, that's where you have the link of how to submit, what the deadlines are. We're working on getting next year's organized, picking out the date and everything. So that's where that information is going to be. Yeah, generally speaking, the, uh, the uh, entries can op will open up in September. And then you can also go through Film Freeway to find us that way, um, as far as the mm -hmm. film festival is concerned. That's incredible. Well, is there anything else as we uh, start to wrap out that you'd like to highlight about uh, your school's film program? or anything audiences can expect in the future? Um, I think, well, one, I guess a couple of things that might be of interest to people, um, internships. Um, we do um, uh, try and coordinate with uh, companies in the area, internships for our students. Um, a couple of them, of course, have interned over there at the film and music office. Um, we've had some people with Nathan Gardaki Productions. They've uh, interned with Green Pastures, et cetera. So we, we see that as being a valuable part a complementary part to the education that we're providing. Um, the festival we mentioned um, and the partnership with the rodeo, I think it's all sort of indicative of our connection to uh, film making culture in the city um, and in the state. So uh, we hope that people get a chance to check us out and, and feel free to contact us and, and see what we can do to try and help you decide how you wanna go ahead about making your next movie. 
That's great. And can you give us the website one more time where people can learn more about the program or reach out to you? okcu.edu slash film. Perfect. Well, thank you all so much for joining us and telling us about your program. We really, really appreciate it and the quality of the work and the students you're putting out into Oklahoma's film workforce. And we will look forward to connecting with you later down the line. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hello, welcome. Can you please tell us your name and what school or program you're affiliated with? I'm Clifton Rayfield. I'm the film teacher at Jinx High School. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being here today. We're, we're kind of mixing it up, having you represent some of the high school programs that exist in the state. So can you tell us a little bit about Jinx program and what it offers students who participate? Sure, I'm happy to do that. Um, this is my 18th year, this will be my 18th year um, running this program, started it up myself uh, 18 years ago. And uh, we really moved pretty quickly into the documentary uh, film world uh, and, and had some major successes with that. And, uh, and now most recently because of COVID, we pivoted to um, fictional filmmaking. And these are all shorts. Uh, we did one feature length doc that was about an hour long, but everything else is shorts. And um, so my, my, you know, my students this year because of quarantining and distance learning and that sort of thing, just ended up being able to make one film each, but in a typical year, three to five films. That's awesome. And how long, I mean, do, does it start throughout high school or how, how long is this program offered while students are in school? Sure, that's a, that's a great question. I can have students, so we have a separate freshman academy and then the high school is 10th, 11th and 12th graders, but I can have students starting in ninth grade. So students can come over from the freshman academy. So I can have students up to four years. And in fact, the longer a student is with me, obviously the more experience they get, the more critiques they get, the stronger of a filmmaker they are themselves. And, uh, and, and so those are the ones who tend to be more successful, the ones who come to me um, either for four years or three years. Occasionally I have, I have two year students who do really well and, and kind of rarely a student who's been with me for one year, but sometimes they continue on in college and do really well. That's great. And we've had uh, the pleasure of reading about your award-winning program and filmmakers throughout these 18 years. Are there any notable alumni that you might like to highlight that are working here locally or nationally that have come through your program? Sure. Well, I'll, our biggest star so far, and I actually identified her as a star when she was a sophomore with me. She came in as a sophomore and hadn't said more than two sentences to me but I was watching her work and I called her into my office and I said I just wanted you to know I think you're the next star of this program and it turns out I was right <laughs> um, but it's Crystal Caiza uh, she's now a documentary filmmaker out of Brooklyn who has screened two of her short docs at the Sundance Film Festival wow. and she most recently won major awards with the Stars Network and the Tribeca Film Festival including uh, some money from a competition um, pretty good amount of money to, to make uh, her first uh, fictional short. She's, she's gonna do that. And she's about to work on a, um, a long form uh, documentary also. She was named one of the 25 new faces of independent, independent film by Filmmaker Magazine. Then I also have uh, Kenzie Clark, who was with me for four years. She's now uh, in Hollywood, have, has worked on HBO's Barry, plus the Apple TV Plus series, Truth Be Told. Uh, McKinley Lair, who is a documentary filmmaker, has recently done work for National PBS and Vice Media, also has assisted with productions for the New York Times. Uh, Sari Streepy, Sarah Streepy, who's a lead assistant editor in LA on various uh, high profile projects, including HBO's Catch and Kill, which is uh, due to be coming up, I, I think possibly this coming year. And then finally, um, and I've had others, but, but see, these are some of the biggest. Uh, George Hall, who's an assistant editor on the movie's Boy State, which won the Grand Jury Prize for documentary feature at Sundance recently. What an incredible lineup of students there. That's amazing. Um, this, I would like to know too, like what kind of expectations can students have? Like, are they 
getting to have like touch equipment and get with editing software? Like what, what kind of tangible things are they getting to accomplish with your program there in Jean? Sure, absolutely. Um, they they are hands on from the first month that they're in with me, and we do training on. Um, they're they're pretty sophisticated video cameras. Um, they're not. We're not using DSLRs, but we're using. A, we now have four K resolution on the video cameras, um, and they. You know, I teach them how to do everything manually instead of automatically. So it's, um, you know, uh, manual focus, uh, manual irising, um, that sort of thing. So that they really get a good sense of um, how, how the industry really works uh, in terms of equipment. And then um, we edit on Avid Media Composer, which is the um, software of Hollywood. Uh, and one of the things I really like about that, not only that I can tell kids that hey, this is what Avengers was edited on. This is what, you know, The Queen's Gambit was edited on. This is about just about anything you can think of that's a name brand out there, a uh, movie or TV show was edited on Avid. So they get this, this real um, uh, industry experience with that. But also the nice thing is they come in, uh, nobody has ever used Avid, the ones who come to me. They've either used Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere, which are both good programs. But it's nice because I don't have to unlearn them of bad habits. Right, right. You know, I teach them the good habits from from the start with that. And as far as like their films and the ideas, you mentioned docs that they're exploring. Is that something everyone is working on collectively? Are they pitching ideas or how does that creative process work? Right, so when we were doing docs and probably from now on, we're gonna do fictional work with the exception of the C-SPAN competition that we enter every year and my students have done amazingly well in that national competition. Uh, There's also a short documentary competition, but otherwise we're gonna stay with the, um, with the fictional filmmaking now, I think. Uh, it's proven really successful this year. Uh, what we did that I think is a little bit different possibly from, from some other programs, is to spend a good six weeks on the story alone. So kids had to pitch to me, every single student pitched to me three log lines. So three one sentence descriptions of a possible short film and we're talking two or three minutes long here. And I asked them to identify specific features that I thought were very important to have in a, in a short film. I have a master of fine arts degree in screenwriting as well as my bachelor's degree. So, um, so, so, so I know a fair amount about that. And so I, so we, we spent some time watching models uh, for the kinds of, of films that I wanted them to do, the short films. And then uh, we really spent some time with the log lines and talking about what, you know, what the strengths and weaknesses were for each of those log lines. And then developing with every single one, workshopping them as a class, but everybody was doing an individual project, but workshopping um, uh, the scene cards and shot lists for it. They didn't, even though I do a screenwriting class where they actually write scripts, that's a separate class, 15 to 30 page scripts. So that's a much longer uh, project. But um, uh, these particular students with the short ones, we didn't do a script per se because they were gonna be filming their own thing. So I knew the important things to have were the uh, scene cards, what's going on in the scene, any dialogue, if there was any, and I discouraged dialogue as much as possible. And then, um, and then also, um, the shot lists, what kind of shots were they going to get? So all that stuff we workshopped as a class, but each student had an individual project. That's great. And it's it's amazing to me that a program like this exists, particularly at the, the high school level. I, I wish I had had something like that for myself back in high school. Um, can you maybe talk to younger audiences uh, and, and, and tell them why they, what's, after high school for them? Is there a career in film available to them after this training? Oh, sure, absolutely. You know, I'm a huge fan of the arts period and we've entered a number of arts competitions and done really well in them. The young arts competition, we've entered uh, the scholastic competition and won huge national prizes in both of those. And we have, um, we've entered uh, film festivals, including Dead Center. We've done pretty well in getting into Dead Center. Um, but, the, but those particular competitions I was mentioning, they're for visual arts and performing arts. 
And again, I'm a huge fan of all the arts, but I think the best one's filmmaking <laughs> because it incorporates so many things and so many aspects really of all the other art forms. So you have visual arts, obviously you have the cinematography part of it. You have uh, performing arts, you have the acting part of it um, and, 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 and vocalizing, you know, too, if, if you have just, you know, voiceovers um, also in it. Um, and then, you know, there's something uh, about, you know, or the organizational uh, skills that you develop, um, both in terms of setting up your project, but also in terms of when you go to the edit stage in structuring the story and storytelling. Everybody loves a good story. And we can see this explosion now of uh, need for content with all of the streaming services. So Hollywood, and when I say Hollywood, it's not just Hollywood, California, but Hollywood now encompasses Oklahoma it obviously. for sure does with so much production activity happening so much production going on now Atlanta which is considered the new Hollywood but it's great that we've got these projects uh, coming to Oklahoma too but um you, you know so much uh demand for 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 great content and storytellers and that's why I emphasize storytelling uh in in my program but really any student going on to any of the programs in our area. And I've had, I've had students at, you know, University of Southern California, NYU, Chapman University in Orange, uh, California, um, uh, Ithaca College, Savannah College of Art and Design, but I've also had them to OU and Oklahoma City University and University of Tulsa and any of those programs are going to emphasize good storytelling. Um, and you get that, you get that background and then you get into movie making. And um, you know it's going to get recognized. You do good stories out there, that's going to get recognized and and help launch your career. Absolutely, and it's been amazing to see so many film opportunities for education here locally after high school, and even for those that choose to study a little out of state too. So many expats, if you will, have come home and brought projects home and further work. So it really is you know, really trying to grow and emphasize our homegrown filmmakers and talent and hone their skills. So we're on board with all of this so much. Is there anything else that you'd like to highlight about uh, the Jinx program as we close here today? Uh, just, you know, that as I mentioned, we've done um, really, really well in competitions. Um, with the C-SPAN competition, my students have won over $83,000 in prizes. Uh, including the grand prize twice, that's $5,000. Mm -hmm. uh, the the $3,000 first prize four times, including two years in a row. Um, the Young Arts Competition, which is visual arts and performing arts, my students won the top national prize four years in a row, all expense paid week in Miami studying film, plus $23,000 total for those four students. And the uh, top prizes in Scholastics Competition, um, in, in the, at the national level, four years in a row, and at the state level, uh, or it may not have been four years in a row, but it was four times, and then uh, at the state level, 12 total times, too. So um, just, you know, I'm really proud of that. Absolutely, obviously. that's obviously. incredible. <laughs> really proud of that, and, and I'm really, really happy, I've got to say, with how it's been recognized by people like you, by people like the um, Oklahoma Film and Music uh, Office with um, Dead Center too. We've, we've had, as I said, some really good successes with getting into Dead Center. It's just really gratifying to me to see um, people reach out to us also and say, hey, we know you're doing some stuff there. We wanna be able to help your students and highlight your program and that sort of thing. So I'm really, really grateful for that. And I thank you very much for that. Well, thank you. And thank you for all the work you do in shaping the young film minds that are going to pave the future for us. Where can people find out more about the Jinx High School program if they're looking for more information? Good question. All they have to do is go to JPS, that's for Jinx Public Schools, jpscinema.com. And we've got uh, examples of our work there, especially if you look at the category um, Cinema Plus, that has some of our best documentary work. And sometime in the next month, I hope to put quite a few of those um, recent short fictional films that my students have done also. Well, that's great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and for telling us a little bit about the Jinx film program. And we'll look forward to connecting with you later down the road. Thank you. Take care.
Hello, can you please tell us your name and what school or organization you are affiliated with? Hi, well, uh, my name is Harry Wallahan and I'm with Dead Center University, um, which is part of the Dead Center Film Festival. And um, I'm the active director right now for Dead Center. Awesome, we're here where, it's, where all the magic is happening, getting to talk to the, the man himself with Dead Center University. Can you tell our audiences today a little bit about the history of Dead Center University and what it provides? You know, Dead Center has been around, I, I, we're getting close to 10 years now. Um, I've been part of Dead Center for almost seven years. And um, in the last seven years, it, it, it's been a partnership with Metro Technology Centers, which is one of the career tech programs here in the Oklahoma City based area. And um, it's been a great partnership between the two. Um, it's mainly been hosted the last seven years at MetroTech at one of the campuses, um, either our downtown campus or one of our other campuses that had a little bit more room to be able to film stuff. Um, but that's, you know, it's not really limited to necessarily our campuses. This year, we are going to one of the uh, studios that have uh, sprung up in town. Uh, we're, this year, we're being hosted at Green Pasture Studios. Um, and um, it's really been an interesting ride over the years. Um, awesome uh, award-winning directors and filmmakers and things have always been a part of uh, Dead Center University. And I think it really started out as kind of the students really going to and attending things that were just only happening at Dead Center, I mean, at the film festival. Uh, but now it's evolved to really being in a, one whole day of hands-on um, studies with the students, getting their hands on cameras and working with directors and VPs. So uh, it's, it's evolved over the year. We still have a day where we have professionals kind of come in and share their stories and panels and things like that. But day one of Dead Center, it's all hands-on with making movies and learning how to do all the various roles. That's awesome. And so how does one, how does a student or someone get involved or accepted to Dead Center University? Yeah, so kind of piggyback up, piggybacking on the last question, you know, it really evolved from trying to get rural students involved in film because um, there's really, you know, the arts programs and as you further get out, sometimes they're hard to find in these rural communities. And um, I would even say film is even more rare, you know. Um, I, I, I luckily went to school, uh, Jinx High School, where we definitely had an active TV production program when I was growing up and got to really get my hands on it. So it, it really tried us to incorporate, incorporate students from all of Oklahoma to come in and be a part of this um, education program. And I think that's kind of, that's really the heart of this is just to encase as many Oklahoma high school students. And, and it really kind of evolved from, uh, from junior to seniors, but we've kind of expanded that out over the years. If you're interested at a freshman all the way to a graduating senior, you know, we want to have those students be able to have the opportunity with our filmmakers and people that are actually making things. So um, it's, uh, it's just a matter of enrolling, going to Dead Center, um, our, the website, and, and, and logging into uh, deadcenterfilm.org. And from there, you'll find the Dead Center University link. And so you just register and it's totally free. It gives you all access passes to all the events and the movies that are happening um, with a student and someone that's their parent or guardian. So it gives them that ability to get moved around and travel to see everything that Dead Center Film Festival also has to offer. That's great. So students and people who are interested can apply through the Dead Center website to participate in the university, correct? Yeah, and we've expanded our numbers. I think it was limited to like 50 at one point. Then we upped the number to 60. And this year, we're opening it up to 80 students. Wow, that's great. So, yeah, yeah. And, and so has our professionals. You know, so our, on day one um, this year, I'm speaking to this year, we have four DPs and four directors. We have two stunt um, coordinators coming in to coordinate some stunts. We have NGP uh, offering their Fisher Dolly. Um, and we have, let's see, what else do we have going? We have Steve Mathis, who's always kind of been a staple for us from day one, who's did movies like Back to the Future, Thor, uh, Moulin Rouge coming in and, and doing our grip and teaching the grip and the lighting. Um, so it's, it's really an incredible group of professionals that come in and support 
what we're doing on that day one. That's awesome. And the, and the students who participate, they're getting to use the crane, touch the equipment, really get a, a tangible hands-on process. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think the unique thing about this year where, we, where we've grown is this year, the students are going to get a selection of cameras. So we have professional grade cameras, including uh, Ari and Alexa cameras. And uh, we're going to have some drones there too this year. So it's kind of giving the, the students the opportunities to get their hands on these $50,000 $50, cameras and lens sets and things like that, that they wouldn't get even in a traditional classroom that, you know, they, it's the, the professional equipment. That sounds like an awesome, awesome experience. And I know in the past too, of course, a little bit prior to COVID, you know, Dead Center would have a uh, Dead Center University programming throughout the year, as you mentioned, sometimes having special screenwriting workshops. And again, previously going into more of the rural communities where high schools would host them for a day and that kind of thing. So it's great that in addition to the programming that exists here at the festival, um, as the world begins to resume and reopen, you know, stay tuned for year round programming because Dead Center does a really great job of offering film education throughout the year through through different things outside of this too. So, you know, there's, when we think about some of the opportunities and connections, you know, I, I think past, um, in the past and in, in the present form, you know, last year we did Zoom calls and it was really, you know, you there was, you think it would be limiting, but it actually opened up doors that we hadn't opened because we could reach to people in LA and people in New York or wherever they were and they would, come in and, and, and tell their stories and share what they were doing. Um, we've had students though make big connections that have been doors that have opened to college and professional careers that have come from them connecting with professionals on the, at Dead Center University. That's incredible. And have you heard of, is there any, um, can you think of any specific success stories that you have seen during your time here of someone who's maybe participated in the program and then gone on to another school or organization and is now like working actively in the industry? So I do know that we've had at least our first student have a film showcase at Sundance Film Festival. Wow, That's what a turnaround. <laughs> yeah. And then we've had a student connect with one of the directors that came in and she was, uh, you know, the, the thing is we really cater to all different types. So we have uh, people that want to come in and be crew. We have people that want to come in and be DPs. Uh, we've had people get into the stunt career because they worked with stuntmen on day one uh, where they got to go, oh, this is something I didn't even think I liked, but I really like this whole stunt idea. And they've gone on to be stuntmen in movies. Um, we've had uh, one particular student a couple of years ago that was an animator and bring their portfolio up to one of our directors. And that director connected them with, um, I guess, the Cartoon Network. Wow. And that year they got a full tour with the president of the Cartoon Network where this person had a connection with. And that that um, president said, hey, th these are the colleges that we pull a lot of our talent from. And so they got a full ride. They, they went with that directive and they went and got a full ride with one of the schools that they recommended and, uh, and still currently going through that school, but they're also now a published New Yorker um, cartoonist. What an incredible so, story. Yeah, that was one of the neat ones. That is so awesome. Well, as we wrap up our time today, is there anything else you'd like to highlight about Dead Center University and what the festival offers to students? You know, the opportunity, I think the thing that we really tie in is a lot of the, the, uh, the directors that are coming in to work with the students have films that have either been in past Dead Center film festivals or winners of the film festivals or currently have a film that's gonna be showing. And so I, I think it's really neat for the students to be able to get to work with that director and those DPs, and then they get to turn around and get to watch some of the movies that they made. And uh, I think that's the biggest impact is that networking ability, um, find someone that they can connect with and then go see their work you know, at the festival. That's a big connecting tissue. And so <clears throat> that's usually our, deep, our DPs and directors that come in and guest artists, they're usually tied directly into having something that the students can tangibly see that person's work. That's awesome, that's great. Well, we're so appreciative of Dead Center, of you and of everything Dead Center University does. 
So thank you for spending some time with us highlighting the program. And we'll look forward to seeing you at this year's festival and later down the line. Thank you so much. Thank you.